making the not too ridiculous assumption that today Celtic after a long hard season will clinch the Premier Division Championship the atmosphere inside this ground is of a cup final and I don't think you can speak any higher of the undying affection of these supporters that they've followed them all around the country and here are the object of their affection the Celtic side and let me go very quickly through it when Billy McNeil came he had a massive reconstruction job to do well Bonner was already there Chris Morris he bought as he did Joe Miller and number nine Frank McAvenny and number ten Andy Walker a huge reconstruction job and at the center of which the player he knew at Manchester City Mick McCarthy making his return today after being sent off against Falkirk on the 5th of March that's good news by the way for Jack Charlton the manager of the Republic of Ireland side now Dundee could uh, perhaps be accused for thinking that they've turned up today to be sacrificial lambs for the slaughter there they are well there's enough professionalism in that team to make a very good game of it particularly up front where Keith Wright scored a hat-trick last week and where Tommy Coyne is only two goals away from equaling Brian McClare's Premier Division record for 35 goals he scored 33 they really will make a game of it and there's the referee Alistair Hewitt from Edinburgh the pitch looked just a little bit the worst for wear in the middle there and I think this is going to be a fast and furious game great atmosphere McAvenny Bun. McStay will be patrolling the midfield area for Celtic, stroking the ball around as confidently as ever done at his best. Last time Dundee played at Celtic Park, they really were annihilated given a lesson in attacking aggressive menacing football conceding five goals but that was only defensively in fact and D in that game played some very attractive attacking football as well oops total much judgment there Stuart Versailles going in for it fighting back well well, Joe Miller has come right across to the goal line. There he is on the goal line now, coming back from it. Obviously being given a roving commission. Just get out there, get on with it, move about. It was McAvenny. That's Rogan! That must be a great chance. Must be yes. Morris. one nothing. Three minutes gone, and that's the scoreline. Well, the man I mentioned who had been bought by Billy McNeil in at the death of this move. Nicely laid back there by McAvenny. And there was Rogan from the Northern Ireland international squad to the Republic of Ireland man, lying very handily there throwing it in one nothing that was a good jump by Saunders now Miller to McAvenny is Burns good run up there by Morris again corner kick and a feature of Celtics play this season that has been the attacking inclinations of both fullbacks certainly Morris comes forward very well McCarthy was up strongly. Big, powerful player. Well, I don't know. The Dundee defence should have realised how good he is in the air. That would have been offside, though. No. Nope. Well, read by Lawrence. This time he was caught, and McAvenny's onside. Ooh, that wasn't far away.
Jacobin is exceptionally good at that. Back to goal, as you will now see. And that ball eventually breaks them. And he quickly turns, whipping it away. You can see he got a little bit too much curl on that. Saunders. For Scythe. It's not a bad ball to launch. It was a very good save. Well, it was initially. And that's headed by Aiken. I thought Bonner was down to that. Really did seem to have a beautiful ball, by the way, piercing the Celtic defence. Bonner looked to have it and seemed to throw it away. Watch this. McAvenny. Got that over well, and there uh, is Shannon. Rogan. Good tackling by Forsyth. Free kick. Bonds with that. Carson hesitating again. And Walker accepting that gift. But not using it well. He came in on it as the Dundee goalkeeper once again. Look almost petrified in the line and he couldn't put it away. White. Giovanni can turn quickly enough. Nicely pushed out Ian Angus. Dundee playing some attractive football at times. Oh, too much on that. McCarthy turned well on it. But not well enough. That's a great chance for Rafferty. And away by McCarthy. Unbelievable. Angus. Well, that's astonishing. They had ripped the Celtic defence apart. And all they get out of it is a corner kick out of all this action. That really should have been put away by Rafferty. I think he couldn't believe his luck in getting in like that. And there was a brilliant save by McCarthy. Miller's been quite waking up though. What's been given? Free kick, in fact. Free kick to Celtic. Up comes McCarthy again. McCarthy's in, and it's up the line by Shannon. Is fighting hard for that. It's McCarthy. Oh, that was a very good save indeed. Well, I must say, having been slightly critical of the goalkeeper, he really redeemed himself there. That's always a difficult ball, bouncing and coming up from the header. You'll see it coming as Morris swept that over. He got the break. Now, always a difficult ball to take. And a downwards header that bounces like that, superb. There's McCarthy, and there goes the halftime whistle. Two exultant cheers, Celtic Trupo, after that goal that uh, eased the day and the pressure for Celtic coming so early from Chris Morris. Doing what he's been doing all season, getting forward. And Morris was there to make it look easy, although it never is. Celtic only 45 minutes away from the inevitable conclusion of their league season and the championship. Well, Dundee starting off the second half have uh, manfully tried to make a game of this. They said they've spurned some very good chances. on there by Campbell who's been largely ineffective obviously slightly fortunate there ball broke nicely for him Morris hit for then free kick this Morris keen to take this pushing John Miller out of the way there's a header
He really does jump well. Watch him coming in once again to the far post. Rogan. Coyne. Was annoyed with himself. It's a bad ball by Coyne. Buns. McAvenny's onside. That's a corner. Miller, Coyne back defending. Oh, it's a great save. Brilliant effort. Watch this whizzing in there from McAvenny. Touched away from its day. Up comes Aiken on that valuable run. Slightly exposed now, though. Here's Coyne. A little turn by Coyne. And Rogan fights through that well. As I say, Dundee have built up some openings for themselves with some neat play from midfield, but uh, never able to convert it into threat. Like this. Well, that's a beautiful chance. And Miller. Right off it. Deftly put through there. That should really have been put in the back of the net, but good goalkeeping. Really credit to go. Look at this superb little nudge through there by McAvenny. And the goalkeeper can use any part of the anatomy he wishes. McCarthy. That was slack and careless. Nice deep touch forward. And McCarthy comes through that. And just occasionally, Celtic have cleared the lines in the most awkward manner, but it's what for them. And here's a counter attack. McAvenny. Couldn't get the shooting chance, but it does. And the flag is up. Free kick. Got it away though. I will see that so often from Tommy Burns. Rogan attacks at pace. was nodded on and Villa had been in that offside position. And it goes through an offside, yes, Coyne. No, as soon as he played the ball away wide to the side, he was going to make life difficult for himself. There he was, pushed it too far to the left. With that, it seemed to come off his uh, shin guard. And then he swept it round with his left. Miller. That's a better move by Miller. That was a save. Superb move by Celtic. Quick understanding between the players. Running off the ball. They did everything. And a very good shot and save. We're halfway through the second half as this corner is taken. And Carson, after a very nervy start, has come on to a fine game. McCarthy once again getting up for this. He doesn't mess about when he's in the penalty area, and that's a very agile-looking movement there from Carson. Push, I think, by White. Free kick to Dundee. Oh, 
I just swing it round. That's a very good ball. Walker has done it. What a fine goal. That's it. That very quality I was speaking about just a few seconds ago, you saw at its best. The quick counter-attack. He's always going to be found when he's needed, and he was there. Carson with no chance. Delicately to the side and then bang. 2-0 with exactly 14 minutes of the game remaining. Any possible lingering doubt has been well and truly extinguished by that very fine effort. Walker again. Oh! Two in about 45 seconds. Three nothing. I mean, we were still looking down at our notes. That's how the catch out comedy is. We're busy scribbling the statistics of the last goal. Really, a blitzkrieg and a personal one. Celtic Park ablaze with colour. A rippling wave of green and white. It's almost as if a huge multicoloured Venetian blind has been put right down the terracing. Only to be ripped open again if Celtic scored another goal or when the celebrations happen at the final whistle. Because that's really all there is between us now and Celtic officially lifting the championship flag. I think the two Celtic substitutes are coming on. Billy Stark and Mark McGee. Miller's going off and so is Frank McAvenny. And they're giving two men a run out, two men who meant a lot for Celtic this season. Billy Stark, who scored a very vital goal in the first Old Firm game of the season, indeed the only goal, and Mark McGee, who has kept them in the cup, and got them to a cup final. Walker, it's a little too much. Better ball, right. That's not a bad ball through, Coyne and Roy Aikens there again. Bad one by McCarthy, and that is brilliantly saved. And again, almost through the legs at time. A final gesture by Dundee. There was a shot, that was Rafferty. He did that very well. Was well taken down by Frail, but... Just touch back. Might be a minute or so added on for stoppage time. Stay. Oh, right off the ball by Rogan. That's not a bad ball to coin. Woo, it whistled past. No, I think the DFA is simply not to mar the party at all by scoring even a single goal as coin blasted at. Everybody looking at the red clad referee who stands out like a beacon. And there it goes, Celtic are the champions. And on to the field come all the youngsters who've been skirting the ground and the players have to go off 
thousands upon thousands pouring over the pitch as Celtic concludes the championship. It is not really what the club wanted at all. They wanted the crowd to keep on the terracings or else the team simply were not going to come back on and I'm not sure if in fact all the players got off. They were suddenly engulfed in that tidal wave of humanity which I really is perfectly understandable. It's happened on other occasions and in other places. Amazing scenes at the end and as you can probably hear in the background even the seagulls seem to be celebrating. Well the club nor the police wanted the crowd to invade the pitch, but you know, it really is understandable on those occasions. I've seen it happen before in other places and other times. But after a patient 20, 25 minutes of ushering part of this huge 60,000 crowd back behind the barriers, out came the Celtic team to reappear to tumultuous celebrations on the terracings. Winning, of course, their new T-shirt signifying and denoting the winning of the championship 1987-1988 to a marvellous reception Celtic supporters coming from all over the country to see this and getting their first view of the new champions it was all very happy wasn't it meanwhile back in the dressing room we had a, a camera unit and we captured some amazing scenes as the Celtic players came back victorious from the pitch <laughs> events that happened at Parkhead yesterday because I think it turned out to be a special day not just the weather yeah it was a great day after this uh, it's one of those days you dream about what a tremendous crowd again it was uh, I think the, the crowd this year has been fantastic they've got behind the boys right throughout the season this over over, over 40,000 on, on a day you know in a match that didn't mean a lot in fact well it, it meant a lot to the, to the fans and to the players because that was obviously the the official presentation of the sure. of the cup and it's a for me personally it's a great honour because that's the first time as captain I've actually lifted the trophy for the club. If there has been one ingredient above all that has taken you to the coveted Premier League Championship, what would you say it's been like? Eh, I think just the, the, the will to win amongst the players. Um, obviously Billy McNeil coming back to the club has installed that in the players and the fact that uh, we really work hard for each other now. We're a team mm -hmm. that don't like to lose. And I suppose one of the great things is that the, the, the number of matches that you've either salvaged or won in the closing stages, that really has been significant if you look back through the records. It has that. Um, I think it doesn't matter if when you score in a game, it could be the first minute or the last minute. It's, uh, the game lasts for 90 minutes and we have scored late on in games. But there's no return from, from a last minute goal. And this in fact... Uh, this is a great strike from Chris Morris. What a tremendous hit of the ball he is. And he just seemed to clip that in the far corner. It's a nice memory for Chris. Is it always nice to score on the last day of the season in the match where the championship was officially handed over to you? Yeah, obviously enjoyed right. that. Great. Uh, I'm going to talk about the cup final in a moment briefly, but Morris, for you, I suppose, the game to remember must have been the second replay against Aberdeen. That must have been a bit special, and I think we'll get a chance now to, to take a look at it because they, it'd been pretty much stalemate, hadn't it? The, the first game, the second game, it looked as if nobody was going to win this match, did it? Yes, both teams played it very tight, uh, and as you say, it looked as though both games are going to end up nothing, nothing. Right, let's take a look at this. This is how Jock Brown described the goal that won the tie and in fact put you into the final. Bannon has now switched to the right for the moment for United. Delicate ball toward Gallagher. That's good control from Kevin Gallagher on the turn. Needs an accurate cross. Ferguson! The breakthrough for United! Morris, there's a lot of talk about this is what your your fifth final. It's a it's a tough one to win. Um, how do you in fact see the, the the match taking shape? What kind of game do you think it will be? I think it'll be a very entertaining game. Our previous matches with Celtic have been really good. Uh, at Tannery, they beat us two one and scored very late on again. Mm -hmm. At Parkhead, we beat them two 0 Another other two games have been draws, but they've been interesting games. They've not been boring games. So I see Sar being really interesting. 
Roy, I think entertainment is obviously very important. Do you feel that it will be an entertaining game, finally? Well, us personally, we like to entertain the fans and we play an attacking style. Mm -hmm. And DNA have shown this year, against us in particular, that they can cause us problems. And um, we're looking forward to the match. I think both teams will go out for a victory. I, I think everyone is. Right, gentlemen, thank you very much. We're looking forward to covering it live. Here's Hazel Irvin with the news desk. Thank you very much. Thanks, lads.